Okay, scooter tramps and chopper jockeys all across the land. It's just after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the uh, East Coast here. Cycle Source Magazine headquarters. It's time for another episode of Shop Talk coming to you live. For anybody who's not currently watching the big Elton John concert going on tonight, <laughs> we're still moving forward with Shop Talk. So here we go. As uh, you all know, 90 to 120 minutes, all the bullshit we can fit. I already said that I'm your host, Chris Callen, here in Cycle Source headquarters, joined by my wife, Heather. And hey, coming yeah. in from parts unknown, unmentioned, our co host, Mr. Mark Persichetti. What's going on, Mark? Oh, you know, quarantine day number one. <laughs> I've been in the house all day today. I haven't left. Oh, so man. First, first day since quarantine, I've stayed home all day. You, you know, know, some of us have to go out there and work in this crap. I, you're on the front lines, man. You're on That's the front it. lines. I'm, me and Dana, we leave here with army fatigues on in the morning. <laughs> so um, I want to welcome everybody to the show. Um, you know, everyone from Chopper Town, everybody coming in from from Chop Call. Like, you guys are so great about sharing the the post about who we're going to have on the show and sharing the show itself. Thank you so much for that because. Chop cold is kind of like your th- or chop cold. I kept saying that all day today. I was talking. Wow, did you forget who where like? No, but I keep switching the two. I keep switching back and chopper forth. Chopper town, chop cold, chop chop cold, chopper town, shop talk. Yeah. Ball just, bearing fits It's all ball so bearing fits It's awesome. It's awesome. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Lisa Ballard today, and we actually one of our guests for tonight. We actually got hip to um, something that she's doing. We're going to get into that first off in the show, but. Before we start that off, um, like I said, Shop Talk is typically 90 to 120 minutes, all the bullshit we can fit. Uh, We don't want you to just sit there and listen to us. As you can see, the chat box is up. We're pulling in comments, questions, concerns from all over the country. What do we got? Let's see. So um, we have Sadok Sally's from Curitiba. I would love to know where in the world that is um joe smith is here joe sparrow we have his undivided attention nice. joe you're not watching joe exotic <laughs> or or the elton john show right i mean come um, on that's this is really i'm cool. watching both right now <laughs> my brother mark is here he's watching from youtube live welcome mark um let's see mike draco john hill lisa ballard we were just talking to you. jeremy valentine from joker psycho works fort wayne indiana's in the house um, John Bugkiller Baker, Lance Baxter, Stan Tazarka, um, Hallie Han. It's a good group tonight. I, I love when Heather does her Miss Sally routine. Like, you know, remember, remember Miss Sally used to hold up the, the mirror with no mirror in it? And what I is Miss Sally? I see I Becky see and Johnny. <laughs> I don't know what Miss Sally is. Uh, what was that called? Was that Romper Room? Yeah, something like that, right? <clears throat> No, wow, be, showing be, our age. That yeah. was like what, fifty years ago? Oh my god. Ah, uh, Pakistan. Wow, right. This on. is so cool. So um the other day, if you guys happen to tune in to Open Road Radio, we had this we have this new thing that we're working on, and I wanna I wanna make sure you guys know about this. It's kinda like anybody who watches the news programs, there's there's shows like the five where they get five different hosts of their own show to all come together. And we've been working on this with um, with Gina Woods and Charlie Brechtel from the Charlie Brechtel Show. Jackie Van Ham comes on. And a bunch of us just get together, people who host shows like this, and we talk about current events and what's going on. It was a really good show the other day. So stay tuned for that. We're still trying to figure out what to name it and, you know, how it's going to be. Sometimes it'll be hosted here on Shop Talk, sometimes on, you know, everyone else's network. But um, you guys out in, in uh, Chopper Town land, you'll get it regardless of who's putting it up there. Um, yeah, so here we go. Episode number 106. Far out. 107. 106, actually. Wait a minute, oh, what? Oh, boy. I'm yeah. so confused. <laughs> yeah, Did so we miss one? We, Did I forget how to count? <laughs> so every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do one of these things here. We All the entertainment we can fit, some interviews, we bring along the news, we pass along events, although that's not happening for a minute. But uh, we start the whole thing off with a little thing we'd like to call the news. First up in the news tonight, pol- hello? <laughs> hello? Pol- Polaris. Polaris temporarily shuts down Spirit Lake Indian Motorcycle Plant over coronavirus pandemic. Now, this is 
not anything usual, unusual. It seems like every day we're getting more of these notices, but um, Polaris in specific on Tuesday temporarily stopped making Indian motorcycles in its Spirit Lake plant as part of a border plan to suspend production for a week at five U.S. plants and two overseas in response to COVID-19 pandemic. The Twin Cities-based company said pandemic concerns are expected to reduce the demand for its power sports vehicles and have a significant impact on its first quarter revenues. Our hearts go out to them, just like everyone who's uh, suffering through the the hard times that this is. And, you know, especially especially everybody that's listening to this right now, man, like you got to give it up to the working man. You know, we're making a little joke at Mark ex- Mark's expense about him being on the front lines. But if you have a job and you're deemed as one of the essentials and you're out there doing it, good for you because there's a lot of people right now that are sitting home wishing that they were hitting the uh, hitting the old time clock. Oh, yeah. And then let me tell you, being out there and um... – uh, it's scary. You get in certain situations like uh, we were in on Thursday where we went to an apartment and there was somebody uh, questionable and we denied going into the apartment and uh, we're still thinking that the guy's sick. But, you know, people like these store workers, they're putting stuff up. And I'd said before with uh, with Dana going and working at this pharmacy and, you know, right in with these sick people coming to get medications, you know, you really got to be careful. And it's funny because I was laughing. I told you earlier, Chris, I think I pulled something in my chest and like instantly I got the corona, I'm dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like every time you sneeze or you cough, it it's nuts, man. It's scary. So yeah. you're thinking, yeah. Oh hell, I don't want to be in the house, you know, be be glad you're safe and yeah. stay safe and that's pretty much what counts the most. Yes, sir. Everybody stay safe. That's a that's the bottom line about that. But hey, um, back to the news for a minute, 'cause we got we got some two great guests coming up tonight. Um Next up, next item on the news comes in from Cycle News. Tucker Power Sports names motorcycle industry veteran Mark McAllister as president. Um, Tucker Power Sports today announced the appointment of former Harley Davidson executive Mark McAllister to the position of president and CEO. McAllister replaces Sebastian Brett Schneider, who has left the company. Um, McAllister's held a variety of roles at Harley Davidson during his 20 four-year tenure with the company after starting a product design and supply chain he moved to senior roles leading the company's sales and growth in europe and asia as vice president and managing director of global markets and previously the asia asia pacific region McAllister led sales marketing and operations of the motor company while working closely with power sports dealers in each region so check them out thank you cycle news for for giving us the update on that. Um, this is a great thing, man. Like we're trying to keep abreast of all the people that are doing outreach, you know, with, with so much going on right now, it's so fantastic to see people from the motorcycle industry actually doing outreach. That's bringing community together and like giving, giving people something to do other than watch the 24 hour news cycle. RSD Roland Sands uh, combats the pandemic blues with worldwide Corona's bike build off. Now, this was one of the subjects the other day on Open Road Radio when the the five of us were on there. And man, it's just a really, really good idea. You know, everything from what Roland was telling us on the show, everything from you know kids with little bicycles up to you know full grown men and all of their stuff. And you can go and check this out through their website. It's It's a fantastic idea. Very few rules. It's really loose. And it's just about community. You know, it's about getting people inspired to go into their garage and and rather than focus on the negatives of this, you know, pull something positive out of of it and at least do something that's going to help you pass the time. So, yeah, I'd like to know what people are doing to pass it. People that are not fortunate enough to be working right now. How are you staying busy? How are you not going stir crazy? I know Chris is painting a lot um, a lot <laughs> um i'm i'm still work you know doing doing the office work and all of that stuff but um what are y'all doing i think she just took a shot at me mark uh, no. yeah i'm I'm, uh, I'm, no. I'm feeling that way too otherwise the fact that if i get I, I think i have like 93 texts of your paintings by the way <laughs> i could do a display right now if anybody wants to see it <laughs> no i didn't mean that as a shot for you i mean it in the fact that you're fortunate enough to have numerous hobbies that yeah. you excel yeah. at whereas well for you me, know on, I'm on, not your a behalf, Heather, on your behalf probably the best part of this is he's not standing there asking you to do stuff for him he found something that, you i know, know trust me 
Like, I'm so glad not to hear, hey, baby, hey, baby, we should do this. We should do this. Now it's, hey, baby, look at this painting. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, Dana's not that lucky. Oh. oh. So a lot of people are already chiming in from social media. They're wrenching. Um, Brenda Jack DeGazio, I'm painting too, right on. Hand engraving. Hand engraving. That's fantastic, nice. man. Nice. I want to know who is learning a new hobby or a new craft? Um, I'm Happy learning how to I take nap, naps. <laughs> oh, fighting, fighting, healthy body from Thailand, right on. Very nice. I, you know, man, I cannot get over how many people from so many different places in the world watch a show. It blows my mind. Yeah, I wished I talked to Ollie yesterday from Germany. Yeah, I did I too. That? How great yeah. was that? Did you? Yeah, yeah. And I forgot to mention to him about this. I did talk to him about the Zoom, though. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I said we got to get together and do this on Zoom. Yep. We need to have him on this show. Oh, that'd boy, be great. The, the stories that Oliver, our, our friend our friend Oliver Bruck from uh, a little town called Giesen right outside of Frankfurt, he came over to the United States as a foreign exchange student for college. And when he came, I mean, he was, we call him the big German because he's ginormous. But he was clean cut and, you know, really, you know, a, a well-mannered kid. By the time he left here, dude, yeah, we ruined him. We yes, ruined yes. him. He may have ruined himself. We just helped him. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite big German story is one time we sent him to, uh, we sent him to Easy Riders when they used to do the the Prospect Rodeo, and we sent him there as you know our official coverage. Well, it was raining when him and the other guy got there, so they drank in the truck for like six hours. That it was just pouring down rain. By the time he got out of the truck, somebody somebody said some smart ass comment to him, and and the guy that was with him, he brings him back at like. You know, 8.30 in the morning, they're sitting in my driveway. Ollie's passed out in the truck. And I'm like, Joe, what happened? And he goes, it was horrible. He said it was raining when we got there, so all we did was drink. Once we got outside and the rain stopped, he said, Oliver went through these people's campsite like he was Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, just told buddy. me a story of getting in an argument on the Autobahn and beating a poor guy up. No. So, yeah, yeah, it's funny stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Right on. Well, let's get back to the news because I'm I'm running on a bit. Uh, oh, make my Mark making soapstone oil lamps. Nice and a little base. That's right. He got a base last year. Very cool. Anthony Robinson saving the world one garage tour at a time. Right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. Oh, learn stained glass. Let's see who else. Cleaning the bike shop a lot. Wood. Tim Kearns is wood burning. Uh, drywall. Okay, well, with that, we actually uh, we Sorry. should get to our first guest of the night. Oh, yeah. um, Kayla Cohen is an amazing, amazing artist. She's done some fantastic projects. Uh, most recently, we've had her on the show for her her book with Charlie Rhodes of her journeys. It was a, a killer, killer piece that they put together. But she has a uh, a new social outreach program that's going on through all of this where where they plan to bring back the fun so we're going to get kayla on super lucky to have her with us here tonight um and we're going to talk about this stuff so she's on she's on but her videos is something weird happening um your video is kind of sideways. There you go. Oh, am I good? Nope, you're still sideways. Turn your phone sideways. There, there you, you go. go. Okay. All right. Better. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a this is a new new feature that we're working on, and obviously we don't have all the bugs worked out from it. But uh, hey, man, thanks for coming on. What's up? Oh, you know, enjoying the quarantine. Not a whole lot changes when you're an artist stuck in your studio all day. So right. I'd say things are pretty sane for me. Oh, man. And, you know, this is this is the biggest reason. Like, we're, we're looking for people that are doing good things like you are for, you know, the, uh, the, the mental health of everybody right now because it's on the edge of crazy. You know, Heather and I talked about this, that it turns out not everybody – is fantastic with being with each other 24 7 and uh mm -hmm. the strain is is becoming 
totally visible from the outside. <laughs> you walk down the street and you see husband and, that, and wives that like have never spent this much time together and you know they're at the grocery store not because they need anything. They just need to get out of the house for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The hardware store has been super busy as well. Right. What is going on with my screen? But... <laughs> Are you having some issues over there? I am. You so, know, and I find there my, we go. I usually find myself pretty good at tech. This thing's kicking my ass. <laughs> I'm good at like, Photoshop, and then I get into this stuff, and it all goes crazy. Well, we'll just deal with it as we go. So, no, okay. Kayla, you started an initiative, Let's Bring the Fun Back. Where, like, what prompted this for you? So, um, Cycle, or sorry, Chop Cult started Let's Bring the Fun Back, and I had been releasing some of my images for people to be able to color at home, because if you're stuck, why not try and pick up a new thing or start coloring like you did when you were a kid to take up your time? And so a ton of people started downloading those images. And then Lisa had contacted me and was like, hey, do you want to do an image with Let's Bring Back the Fun? And we can release it on Chop Cult. And I was like, you know what? A few people have been asking me if they wanted to do a competition or we wanted to do a competition. So we kind of combined those ideas. And then we just made a coloring contest with the Let's Bring Back the Fun. Right on. So what, what, are, the, yeah. what are the parameters? So all you have to do is go to my website or go to my Instagram, which is Kayla Inferno Art, or my website, which is InfernoArtStudio.com. Uh, download the coloring page, color it, and then post it on either Instagram and Facebook and tag us. Right on. That's it. Free competition with uh, a price package valued at about $175. Nice. And better yet, you get, when you download, it's actually a piece of your art they're coloring, correct? The, yes, correct. So that's pretty awesome, too. Uh, Charlie decided to do one the other day when he was working, because apparently <laughs> electricians, it's essential. So... <laughs> was that a yeah, dig at Charlie right there? Back the fun. <laughs> I think that he dude. decided he now runs the studio and he's a professional <laughs> artist. Because he could color. <laughs> oh, this computer's kicking my ass. Okay. So um, this has got to be this has got to be super hard for you guys because you guys you guys are both super active people, right? So it's got to yeah. be it's got to be tough. I know for Heather and I, like to come off the road. You know, at first we were like, "Oh, this is awesome, man! This we're we're totally down for this. It's going to be." you know, bitching, we'll have all this. Mm -hmm. And then like the second day we were like, Hmm. Yeah. I think the hardest thing for me, like seriously <laughs> was working from home and working as much as we do. It's not uncommon, common for me to not leave the house for several days at a time. But recently mm -hmm. I had started every day going to the gym just to make sure I got out of the house and I didn't realize how important leaving that house for that two hours every morning was and that was that's been mm -hmm. the hardest thing for me is just not not doing that one simple thing every day everything else is is fairly status quo but yeah yeah that that two hours ended up being way more important than i thought <laughs> 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 so what is yeah i don't how, how many? How many of you? How many of these have you got in so far? And what's the what's the most elaborate thing you've seen? Of your of your. Um, well, so I've noticed a hundred people have downloaded the image off the website, and I've seen six so far come across Instagram, and I'd have to say, I think well, a little girl named Millie has been pretty active. I think she's about seven or eight, and like bright colors, rainbows, and. On one of the images, she, she wrote, motorcycles are fun, and clearly learning how to write a few of the letters, and that was really entertaining to see. Right <laughs> well, you guys, you guys definitely like, you know, let's bring back the fun is perfect for this, because 
I mean, that's that's kind of between between you and Charlie. And he just sent me a message and said, "Hey, leave me out of this." But, <laughs> but, but <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> no. But between no. between you two guys, I mean, like seriously, the the fun of motorcycling that's that's what you're all about. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's a it's a full time yeah, gig. Right like ev- everything from the Roads of for Journeys book to the you know the the children's book that you you did with with the late Jesse Coombs, which you know, again, can't even can't even believe that that right on, Joey and the Chopper Boys. Yeah, I... yeah, a copy of that'll be so weird. This is open to all ages, so there's an adult prize, which is a print of the painting behind me, and then the children's prize is a copy of the book will be sent. You know how great is this? Like when we were in pre-show, I had I had talked to Charlie about eventually I want to do a painting of him, and I said that like for me doing a painting spending that much time it it has to be somebody that has been important in my life that's affected my life how great is that you know from an artist perspective i can say to you that you have that that production that piece of material that you put together to always mark your time and and that friendship that you Mm -hmm. had you know i mean that's fantastic that really is it's kind of like I don't know, when I'm having a rough day, you scan through it and you just remember writing it and doing it together. And, you know, it's it's pretty magical being able to create something with someone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cre- creation, creation in itself is fantastic. But when you can, when you can mark your time with another person through something, it always, every time I pass one of, one of my paintings or something and look at it or pull out an old magazine, those stories are awesome. Mm-hmm. It take, takes you to that moment. <clears throat> yeah well right on what's uh what's what's first on the list for day one of no quarantine uh probably get the motorcycles out i got plenty of, to work on it but you know is it uh, maybe go see a movie to be honest yeah that's funny I, I think that's the one thing i do like about motorcycles is it could be considered social distancing right yes it I mean, can yeah, that's true. through the quarantine, you're. I mean, pack a little lunch in your backpack, hit the road. Mm-hmm. Lots of people are doing it around that's here. True. I'll tell you that. Well, supposedly there's mm-hmm. some guy that has a video out that's like breaking down the science behind why motorcycles are not safe for social distancing. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Yeah, mm-hmm. is the complete antithesis of everything that we've always thought. <laughs> Can we just tell him to shut up now? <laughs> That's what I love about you, baby. It's that politician inside. That's right. Oh, I'm a giver. It's a curse. Oh boy. <laughs> Kayla, tell everybody where they can keep up with your art and you and and your rows are for journeys um, and everything. You do so many cool things. So just tell everybody everything. <laughs> Let's make it easy. All of the things. Um, the you things. can follow me either. All of the things include, but not limited to. If on Instagram, if you go to Kayla Inferno Art or Roads Are for Journey, as well as InfernoArtStudio.com. Tell me that. What's up? Keep it condensed. What's up next for Inferno Art Studio? What do you have coming up with that? So, with our upcoming trip in about six months, uh, Inferno Art Studio is going to change. So, I'm predominantly a commission artist, and now it's becoming, I just got my easel in that mounts to the back of my motorcycle and I'm going to be doing small landscapes from the road and so no longer in about six months will I be taking on much if any commission work because I'll be living on the road for six months to infinity right so now Um, tell people about that trip you're taking we'll be leaving here in December um and then we're going to be riding to Tierra del Fuego and back wow insane and Charlie's definitely taking his chopper, and I'm still between my Africa twin or my chopper just because being able to carry my art stuff and camera equipment and clothes, I might need a little bit more space than my chopper can hold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, clothes, cool. are, clothes are so overrated. Don't worry about it. Just bring what you just wear. Yeah, right? Yeah. Wash it. Maybe you'll hit some rain. Wash it on the road. I already can't yeah, wait exactly. to hear clothes I'm wearing and smart. That's all I need. Yeah, that's all you need. You know, I tell <laughs> I tell Charlie this on a somewhat on a somewhat regular basis. It's it's hard to make me jealous, 
because I've been so many places on a motorcycle and like I've ridden until my, my hands and legs were numb from it. But his stuff and watching the stuff that you guys do, I genuinely get jealous. I, I look at some of that stuff and I'm just like, man, if I would have known, if I would have known Charlie when I was still a young man, <laughs> we, first of all, we'd have raised some hell together. First, he wouldn't have remembered each other. I mean, if we were both young. Right. He'd be like, what? Who? <laughs> but I mean, man, some of the stuff that you guys do is just honestly life yeah. lifetime achievement stuff. Well, I think for and Kayla, you two, the things that you guys have taken the opportunity to do because well, actually, you make your opportunities. The things that you've made your opportunities to do, again, most people only ever dream of but the fact that you go a step further and share them with the world i think is fascinating and i know you guys are into <laughs> Char charlie just said in, in a comment we'd both be in jail we'd be out we'd be out way way before this we'd be out <laughs> they would totally both be in jail you know, isn't he glad we didn't leave him yeah, out of this 100 <laughs> right oh back He's in, in the, the house day. i mean walk out here right join the fun no, just kidding Oh, Kayla, I if you've ever point... heard any of their stories from back in the day, oh. they would all be in jail. Still. No, oh. stop now. It's amazing, oh, first of all, that me and Mark still talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a long, tough road. This has been one hell of a marriage. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I want to I wanna thank you for coming Ooh. on and sharing some time with us. Um, you're a beautiful, beautiful person for for taking a tough time and making other people you know, part of a community and giving them a sense of purpose. So, so thank you so much for that and for coming on tonight. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to, uh, we're going to continue to post everything. If there's anything that we do, we can do. I mean, we can throw in some prizes, subscriptions and stuff like that. We can, you know, we'll up the end. Yeah. We, Whatever you we need. Can publish, we can publish the winners and, you know, we're, we're happy to help out okay. with that too. Awesome. Thanks. Oh. All right. And I want regular updates when you guys are on this crazy trip. Yes. Tell I Charlie. cannot wait. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll all, um, we started another website called Road There for Journeys, and we'll kind of be updating everything with a video blog, a blog, and then using social media, hopefully, depending on internet connectivity. Right on. All right. Awesome. Well, cool. Listen, you, you guys say safe. Say safe. I just can't get it together tonight. I can't You're talk tonight either. I'm a, okay. I'm a piss poor <laughs> show <you>. host. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Stay safe. And uh, hopefully we see you on the other side of this for better days, man. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks. All right. <laughs> Bye, Charlie, in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so for everybody, I have posted Thank links you. to Kayla's website, to the coloring page, um, and as well as roads are for journeys in the comment section. So all you have to do is scroll up and you'll have access to all of those. So rolling on, we still have a killer, killer guest coming on. If you guys have watched the uh, preview, Doug Wolfke is going to be with us here in just a little bit, but we're going to take two minutes right now and, uh, you know, do the thing that we do to help pay the bills. We'll be back right after these short messages with more shop talk. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a strange point in American history where we are dealing with a virus situation that seems to be quite serious on the surface. They're shutting down stuff left and right. I mean, my kid's school, I'm pretty sure is going to get shut down. They just shut down. The LA Unified School District, New York shut down this morning. The NBA is shut down. They canceled MotoGP, which is crazy. Uh, they're canceling the Fred Hall show and they're... All schools are shut down until April 20th. All schools are shut down until April 20th. You cannot have one roll of my toilet paper. Did you say five weeks? They're shutting down schools for five weeks. We are finding out literally minute to minute what this coronavirus thing is doing to our partners, our economy, our events, um, our schools, our children. Everybody, it's insane what's going down. So actually what we did is we just had a little meeting. We said, hey, what can we do about the coronavirus to 
get people's minds off of this shit. You know, what can we do to like do something a little bit different? Because everyone's kind of panicking right now. I just found out that my kid's school is canceled for five weeks. So how do we take advantage of that? What can we do? How about a coronavirus bike build off? Some of us are gonna have five weeks at home, two weeks at home, who knows? Three weeks at home, a month at home, two months at home. It sounds like a great time to build a motorcycle. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, why don't we do a coronavirus motorcycle build off? And we're gonna give the winner of the coronavirus bike build off a thousand bucks. Just decent, right? Thousand bucks, thousand dollar bike build off. Send us some pictures of your bike, hashtag coronavirus bike build off and we're gonna send you a thousand bucks at the end of the coronavirus. Looking forward to when this whole thing is gonna be over. We can't focus on today, we're gonna to have to focus on the future. And let's focus on building motorcycles. If you go on the Roland Sands Design website, we got a lot of parts for your bikes on that website. We got gear, you can get ready to ride a motorcycle. Actually, why not go ride your motorcycle? What's safer than cruising around with a helmet on? You could even literally go into the store, you have a helmet on, you just leave it on. You don't even take it off and no one even thinks you're weird anymore. Stay safe out there, America. Build motorcycles, ride motorcycles, and have a good time. I don't know if that makes sense or not. It kind of makes sense to me. This whole thing doesn't really make sense to tell you the truth, but coronavirus out. Mine. Steel Pony. That was our base, our home base operations for the the uh, hand built lot last year. Man, I love that place. That was a good time. It was That's, a good yes, time. Yes, it was. Hey, you so guys. The mini bike rides there were epic. Right, Michael yes, Lichter. I'll were. never forget. I'll never forget Michael. The look on Michael Lichter's face. He was having <laughs> so much fun. Forget that. The pool and the hot tub. Hello. <laughs> So listen, you guys are killing it with Sharon tonight. Thank you so much. That's the one thing that you can do to make sure that Shop Talk continues to grow. Although, like, it's unbelievable how much that we're covering already. I don't know if it's because Elton John's on the other channel and he sucks so bad or <laughs> what's going I mean, I'm sure he doesn't suck. But let's face it, it's Elton John, you know? How did Walk that work out? <laughs> you mean like 92 today or something? No, but every time someone says his name, I think about the day that he took the stage and said, well, I really don't have a song about a motorcycle, but he's one about a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enough. that went bad. Um, no, Elton John's a fantastic entertainer, and I'm just he being a smart ass. I'm just being a smart ass. He just didn't really go well at the Harley party. Just saying. <laughs> so let's bring Mark back on for a minute. Hi, Mark. Well, hi. Over here, still wondering what the hell you're talking about. I got all excited about the mini bike races at the hand belt lot. Oh. Ranting on about Elton John. I don't even know what you're talking about. Mike Draco's telling us Elton John is hosting other artists. I know, but I can't be a smart ass about everybody at once. I <laughs> yeah, you can't. You. You've been doing it your whole life. <laughs> Uh, but like I said, you guys are killing it with shares. Um, we appreciate it. We appreciate everything that goes on over at, at Chopper Town, Chop Cult. Um, like I said, we got a lot of great stuff coming up between Grease and Gears Garage and <laughs> this stuff that, uh, what? Chris Summers isn't Simmons. He's a great guy. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and listen, I'm just kidding. I'm honestly just kidding. There's a number of yeah. his songs that I'm awfully He fond is of. amazing. Yeah. He is a yeah. phenomenal he's, he's a, artist. He's a great artist. He truly he is. He just has to be booked for the proper demographic. Oh, she says she was backstage. It was crazy. Oh, boy. Oh, I can only imagine. Well, listen, we have a couple minutes before we bring our next guest on. So let's go back to the news Ooh. where the next okay. item comes up from Car and Bike. BMW recalls motorcycles in U.S. over faulty brake lights. This is what the second or third recall that we're seeing this year that has something to do with the brake lights 
Being Brake lights are so rated. I know. Half yeah. the time they don't work on our choppers like we give a yeah. rat's ass. <laughs> I rode around cheap chopper for how long without a brake light? I mean, what's worse than you could have? Right. BMW Motorola issued a recall for more than 4,000 motorcycles sold in the United States after it was discovered that a fault with the brake lights made non-compliant with the law. The National Highway Traffic Safety yeah. Administration has published a recall notice that affects 4,026 motorcycles across 15 new models in BMW Motorola's 2020 range. BMW Motorrad dealers in the U.S. have been notified and owners are urged to contact a local dealer to get the motorcycles fixed. However, how this will be implemented currently while social distancing is being implemented across the world has not been specified. That was like an official news report. Yeah, you did really well on that. Res respect. <laughs> I don't know about that. But... That's what's up. Wow. You need to get out of the house. I know. My God. Back to the news. <laughs> Oh, and it just seems like everything in the news today, and this also from Car and Bike, everything has coronavirus attached to it. But sadly, again, another one we have to report. Royal Enfield shuts down all global operations. Royal Enfield has decided to suspend all operations globally from March 23rd, 2020 till March 31st, 2020. They're shutting for seven days, eight days. Really? Yeah. The outbreak of no coronavirus, COVID-19, according to a statement released by the company, a global shutdown includes the company's manufacturing facilities across a bunch of places that I'm not even going to try to say. Come on, give it a shot. <laughs> I can't. Did you see those words on the screen right now? That's can't ridiculous. Um, technical centers across. Yeah. A lot of places. So a lot basically, of places. everybody. We Did you just, set me up with this? So basically, this is, this is almost, my wife's idea of a joke right no, there. Almost every motorcycle manufacturer in the country, I mean, in the world actually, is shut down right now. Um, I just don't understand. I, mean, what, I should have just done a blanket news oh, statement. Why did they say eight the days? The whole world is shut down right now. So, yeah. Yeah. James Gargett, hi from lockdown, Glasgow, Scotland. Oh. Oh, I've always wanted to go there. Not What's now. the chopper scene like? Yeah, yeah, dude, what is the chopper scene like in, in Scotland? Um, I like choppers. I like choppers. I like motorcycles. Stupid so motorcycles. this one that you have up next uh -huh. is more of a just because you can doesn't mean you should. Next up in the news 100%. from Auto Evolution. A Harley Davidson Anaconda limo is one of the longest motorcycles in the world. You know, I know exactly why you had to put this news piece up this week because all of the what's his name? What's his what's his Joe name? Exotic. Joe Exotic. This is oh, this God. is obviously Joe Exotic's motorcycle. The Harley <laughs> Davidson Anaconda. Uh, the Anaconda is named just that because it was or aimed to be the world's longest motorcycle on the road, unveiled on February 13, 2004 at the annual CarQuest Auto Parts World of Wheels. It's the brainchild of one Steve McGill from Kansas City, Smokey, as he likes to go by. We've discussed this in a previous story, another strange Harley-Davidson-based limousine hybrid, the limo bike, which is part Harley... Hello. <laughs> I think, I, I think that we have uh, Doug getting ready to come on. Um, part limousine, complete steaming pile of... No, the Anaconda is different. <laughs> it resembles more so motorcycle. Get to the point. It's like 19 feet long and like 1,400 pounds and can seat nine people. Again, you know, that's just, just because an you can to doesn't mean you should. Right. Hey, do, do you see how Heather took charge there? She's becoming yeah. our Robin Quivers. It's awesome. Oh, well, that, that's exactly what we asked for. And then she had to ask who Robin Quivers was, of course. I still don't know who Robin Quivers is. Uh, Tim Corn's Pizza's here. <laughs> I like pizza. That's exactly what that little bell was like. Uh, okay, well, let's, uh, let's see if we can get our next guest up. Um, you guys may know him as Round the World Doug. Awfully good person taking some time with us tonight, and he's upside down. He is upside down, but once he gets there, oh boy, what's... he's really tall. <laughs> what's up, Doug? Howdy. How you doing, man? <laughs> All righty. So, round the world, Doug. Welcome to Shop Talk. Well, thank you. I haven't seen y'all in weeks. <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> oh wait, I'm there. I forgot there. I was supposed to hold it. Sideways. There you go. <laughs> so, um, 
Doug, Heather has like a million and two questions I for do, you and tonight. And I see She's, Doug all the time and I never like, I she, never just interview him on the spot. But she never gets you in this capacity. Oh my God, I have to say what's up to Chopper Dave. He's in the house. I have so many questions for you, Doug. <laughs> so many. Um, I just don't even know where to begin. Let's first start with, I mean, around the world, Doug, obviously. How many countries have you been in? On your um, motorcycle or on a motorcycle? Uh, I don't know. I counted one time, but I can't remember what it was. Like 60 or 70. Wow. Um, but yeah, I, I, I forget. I counted them one time. <laughs> 60 or 70 different countries. Can you name some of them? Uh, uh, like a lot of the stand countries, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, um, uh, Nepal, uh, North Africa, Tunisia, Morocco, pretty much all of Europe, uh, Eastern Asia, you know, China, Korea, Russia a few times. Um, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, just North Africa, and I haven't been to South America yet. But uh, yeah, it's, they're on the list. So how'd you get started? How'd you get started doing this? Right. Um, a friend of mine was a uh, a missionary in uh, Eastern Europe back oh, 15, 16 years ago, and uh, well, no, it was longer now. It's like 17, 18 years ago. And he was telling me about all these old motorcycles he was finding in Hungary. And so I'm like, well, I, I, I need to come over and, and go shopping. <laughs> so, uh, so I did. And while I was there buying old bikes, um, I bought a KLR 650 over there and uh, took off riding on it and just kept going back every, you know, few months in the summertime and spent a couple months uh, riding around on it and, and then I, I read the, uh, the book, uh, The Long Way Round, where the, uh, the whiny actor guys got the free BMWs to do around the world trip. <laughs> and uh, I was really interested in the book until they got real whiny about, you know, who would give them free motorcycles. I mean, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Use the force of your checkbook and just buy a damn one. Dude, that is uh, so great. <laughs> so anyhow, I, uh, I'm like, well, I want to do a round the world trip. And... Uh, I don't want to do it on a new bike. I want to do it on an American bike and something that I like. So I, a friend of mine had a 48 Indian Chief basket case. So I got home from Africa that year on the KLR, uh, bought it, built it over the winter, and that April I took off and circled the globe on it. That was 2006. So. Cool. Wow. Dude, the, the, the rest is history. You have a huge fan club. I just know. so you know, they're they're blowing up. They're blowing up our chat. Our chat. Dude, right he's, al he's always so much fun to hang out with because he has a great sense of humor and his stories are epic. So yeah. I can understand why he has a good fan club. Listen, and he's a he's a <laughs> wicked smart ass too. Yeah, yeah, he fits right in with us. He really is, and like yeah. you, you don't realize that it's coming, and it's a total nut punch. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? That's like, why I like Doug. One one day I I had last last Daytona I had just got something wicked done and I had to push my bike to build dodges because it broke down and it was it was double jeopardy because I had just at Willie's in front of other guys that were kicking 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 this motorcycle I walked over and kicked mine one time and kind of looked over and rode off. Well, you know what happens anytime you do some <laughs> shit like that. I got two miles down the road and the bike broke down. I pushed it to build dodges and there's Doug's and he goes. He's like, hmm. Chrome he said, didn't Boy. get you home. He said, all that chrome on that motorcycle sure looked good when you were pushing it. And I was like, shut up, old guy. Old bike guy. Whatever. Shut up. And I put, he says, well, bring it over here and let's see if we can fix it. And he actually took his his time and, like, you know, fixed the motorcycle for me. Yeah, but he awesome. got a lot of good digs in while he oh. was doing it that evening. We had, we had some laughs. Dude. Dude, and st I mean, still, I still laugh about it, but I was pretty swollen and sore for a couple minutes. <laughs> Good oh. stuff. Yeah, Lord knows I've never pushed a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> so where, where has, is your, do you have a favorite place that you have been and a place that you would never go back to? Um. I really like Tajikistan. It's in Central Asia and the Pamir Mountains. Uh, and 
for the scenery, I like that. For the people, I really enjoy Russia. Um, really? I've crossed Russia four times now, and the people are just so nice. Wow, seriously. Um, and as far as places I don't want to go back to, um, East St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> See what I say. <laughs> wicked smart ass. He's a wicked smart ass. Here's the oh, trip. Randy right now just fell off his yeah, chair. Right? <laughs> here's here's the trip that I want <coughs> that I want you to tell everybody about is is you and the group of guys reinvading Normandy. Yeah, and, and I apologize. I I'm going to write the story for the magazine. I uh I actually, earlier this week, because Lord knows we all got free time now. I was just going to say, actually, what are you going to tell me, Doug? You're looking for some time to, <laughs> no, to get it done? No, <laughs> but I actually got all the pictures together for the story. I, now I just got to write it. So anyhow, I've been, I, I'm a World War II buff, and uh, I've traveled all over Europe into a lot of uh, uh, battle sites, POW camps, concentration camps, um, just anything you can imagine to do with the war. And uh, for years now, since I started going to Europe, I wanted to do a 75th anniversary trip on a WLA. And so I invited some friends of mine, and uh, and five of us went, and oh, here, here's the bike. <laughs> wow. Look at that and, place. Uh, yeah, it's, it still looks about like it did when I got it back. I really haven't touched it. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we shipped the bikes to England, um, <laughs> rode down the pool, took a ferry boat over to northern uh, France. Um, I was on the beach uh, exactly 75 years to the minute after the invasion. I got, you know, pictures wow. and all that, and it was, we it have, was pretty amazing. I'm Being the 75th, it was, a, it was a big deal. There was a lot of people there. We have one of the pictures up right now that's, that Heather shamelessly stole from your your I social told him media I stole it. and it's just I, I can't imagine the the emotional gravity that must have been going through your body as you stood there in that spot oh uh, it was it was uh it was pretty uh awe-inspiring i mean it was just you know to know that here i am on this beach that 75 years ago i mean you know people were just dying left and right and uh you know because that's it's a long time ago, but it's not that long ago. Yeah, and really. uh, so it was, you know, it was, uh, it was interesting. And then after that, we went to, uh, there was a lot of other things that was 75th anniversary, uh, the Battle of Arnhem, uh, the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium. So we went to those places as well. And uh, we rode across to Berlin. And uh, so that took us about a month. And then me and my friend Kelly, uh, who uh, I'll shamelessly plug his uh, museum here in Kansas. Uh, he, he's like me. He didn't have, you know, you know, to get home for a job or, you know, I think his wife was kind of glad to get rid of him for a little while. And uh, so we stayed another month and a half. We were over there for two and a half months. And we rode on down to uh, Bulgaria. And uh, I have a a uh, place in Bulgaria, a so motorcycle hotel and campground, a little village in the mountains. So we spent some time there and then rode back up to Hungary. And a friend of ours in Hungary, who's a Harley collector, helped us arrange uh, a container to ship all the bikes back. Right on. Okay, I want to be Doug for a minute. <laughs> go ahead, <Wow>. go. <laughs> nope, fail. <laughs> Here, okay, so the the ladies the ladies are all responding right now, and uh, the question that's on everybody's mind is this picture. What what's going on with the the uh, the belly shirt I, and oh, <laughs> oh the old picture? I just I don't, that was um, 1987, if I remember right. So it's you know, dude, and check it riding, out. Even I've even, been riding. Riding shitty old choppers for a really long time. I still have that bike. One of these days, I'm going to get it running again and bring it down to Daytona. I don't think I have that shirt anymore, but I still have the bike. What What is that thing? Is that a C, an old CB chopper? Yeah, it was a CB 550 nice. at that time, or it might have been a you know, might have been a 750 at that time. 
I found that either motor would fit in that frame. So depending on what motor I could find whenever I burnt one up, that's what I'd throw in there. Dude, that's so cool. So and look at that thing packed to the bejesus too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> what was your very yeah. first motorcycle? What? What was your very first motorcycle? Uh, I had a, uh, dirt bike, a uh, Hodaka 90, uh, when I was nice. uh, pretty young, a uh, buddy of mine went in and, and I went in halves on it because my, uh, parents wouldn't let me have a motorcycle. I've, I've rebelled since then. And, uh, <laughs> so we went in halves on it. So when I came home, all skin up from crashing a dirt bike. I had the lion say, Oh yeah, crash my bicycle again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and then, bring back some memories though. Hadaka had the coolest bike names, the coolest. Oh, yeah, they had the combat and I, wombat and the dirt squirt. Well, uh, among my many uh, uh, collections of motorcycle crap, I, I also love the uh, Odaka name. So I have a collection of the air filters here. Wow. I don't have a com I don't have the combat wombat <clears throat> yet. Still looking for one of those. I, got I see one up there that says Wombat. That's the Wombat, oh, not the just, Combat Wombat. Just the Wombat, right on. So the Combat Wombat was more oval shaped, and it, it was OD green, and it looked like military font, and it said Combat Wombat. Chopper I Dave, haven't found one of those yet, but I'm, I'm looking. Chopper Dave says Super Rat. You got the Super Rat? Yes. Yeah, right on. Yeah, they had the coolest names ever for motorcycles. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we had a Hudaka. It was a group of ours that, that owned it. We all beat the crap out of it. My first bike was a Bataka. But Hudaka, that was right there next to it. So. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had a, a few Bultakas over the years. They're like riding a bull. So, listen, <laughs> your, your, your collection is... Uh, is is definitely a, a topic worthy of discussion here. I, I keep hearing about this amazing this amazing store power of, of motorcycle memorabilia and bikes and stuff. So we're finally in your garage. This is something we're going to start doing a little bit more of here on Shop Talk. We're going to have guys on and just do a what's in your garage segment. But you're going to be the first one. So we're in your garage tonight. What's in your garage? Um, okay, here. Let me see if I can flip this thing around. Um, t -t 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 did this earlier. We did have that a is? journalist at his shop. Oh, ah, there we go. So okay. I'm so, still waiting on so the story. Now, <clears throat> this is the big back part of my garage. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's, but, but the thing is, it's not hoarding if you have cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. I say the same thing all the time. <laughs> oh, Do you hear so, that? yeah. These are mostly my riders, and I do try to ride most all of these, but some of them get ridden more than others, of course, because there's only so many hours in the day. But Wow. Well, take us around to, to, to a couple of your favorites. Um, uh, this one I really like. I found this uh, to a friend of mine. Put my helmet down over here, so I don't want to scratch it up. <laughs> <laughs> So I found this uh, to a friend of mine a couple of years. It's a 41 Indian 4. And uh, I'd wanted a four-cylinder for a while. And this came from the original owner's family, and it hadn't been on the road since the 50s. So now it's all mechanically rebuilt, but cosmetically it's still original paint and everything. Um, mm. Let's see. You saw my this year's Cannonball bike down at, at – uh, I think the we bike, gave it a trophy. Just, uh, 21 Harley, the one with the yellow scallop. Yep, I love that bike. Um, that's World War II BMW two-wheel drive. Um, Dude, didn't that, that BMW, didn't um, didn't it also have a package? It was uh, it was like a, a personal heating device. that It was like a, a canvas thing that came around your legs and stuff and would actually contain the heat of the motor and put it into your, put it like into a, a, a early heated vest. I'm, I'm not sure. I wouldn't doubt it just because the Germans were real crafty about making stuff. And the way the exhaust is on this thing, it, it comes from the engine, both cylinders down to a collector. Right. And then it comes back and then straight up into the, this weird looking muffler. So 
I don't know that they had something like that, but I remember I, seeing that know. at the uh, at the Packard Museum in Ohio. They had a they had a motorcycle exhibit called "Working at Work and at War," and they had a, oh, okay. they had that BMW, and it actually had that accessory on. It was far out. Well, I mean, they used them in some pretty you know adverse temperatures. So yeah. Oh, and then so these are the bikes that I ride a lot, and then up here is kind of my workshop area um either bikes that i'm working on or in line to get worked on or uh, whatever i just finished this one today so i've had it for a while and just nice. kept putting it off and it's a 74 ducati and dude i'm wicked jealous a, of that that's badass this one's pretty interesting this is a, a harley xa experimental army yeah Yo. And so they made a thousand of these. It was basically the power plant was a copy of this 38 BMW. So the huh. parts on there changed, but it's a copy of that. But they made a thousand of them, but from what I understand, they only made 60 of them with the, uh, the solid wheels. So this is one of the 60. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's far out. I need to uh, get it finished up. I know a cat that has parts and, for uh, that. I was just, you know. <laughs> no, seriously. I, I, need the, I need the front engine cover. That's the one part that I have not found. Listen, yet. Chris Chris Gatto at Cycle Warehouse in Butler, I guarantee he has it. He has okay. it well, it'll be somebody I definitely need to, to holler at then because I, I really want to, want to get this thing on the road. Yeah. This was a really odd bike because it had – Left hand throttle, right side clutch, oh. wow. and left side front brake. And it, it had an automatic advanced uh, distributor. I have since swapped it around because I'm never going to get used to a right side clutch, right. Like a hand clutch. So I put the clutch on the left where you know it's supposed to be, and I put the throttle on the right just to make it easier. And it's also... Um, what else was this? The first Harley that had, I believe the first one had a, a automatic advanced distributor. There's a lot of really oddball things about it. And, you know, they were made for a desert fighting in North Africa. Uh -huh. But by the time these were actually in production, the fighting in North Africa was pretty much over with. So then they, you know, they just never really uh, Dude, uh, that's went, uh, went ahead with it. This is an odd one. Um, this is a uh, a 1955 Rikuo, which is a yeah, uh, yeah, copy yeah. of a Harley Davidson made uh, in Japan. Yeah, and it was, was actually made under off. license. Is that how you actually well, say that? Well, it was made that? under license. Rikuo. It's yeah. Japanese for King of the Road. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 I misspoke. It's, it's I misspoke. weird when you look at it. About what? They I, I they they did actually sell the license for those to be made and I mean it was it was something I had always heard of. I've never yeah, actually from, seen one. All right, we gotta go there. Right? Oh well, yeah. You, you gotta come down and visit. Oh dude, that would be fantastic. Missy's been here. I know. <laughs> actually we should be having a story forthcoming but this about thing, Doug um, and his shop. A what? And Missy is working on the story about you and your shop, so hopefully that'll be coming out soon, so we can share all your deep dark secrets. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. okay. <laughs> how how long were the and then, uh, Rakuos in production? Uh, from late thirties, I think. Um, and and I'm no expert on any of this stuff. Um, I'm thinking like from they they actually did the deal when they, from what I understand and again it's just what I've picked up on I may be completely wrong but when Harley was doing the knucklehead they had all their uh you know all their expense and everything and they needed some some cash influx so they uh they sold the 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 tooling for the RL and the VL to this Japanese company which is the RL's, RL was a 45 inch, the VL was a 74 and later an 80. And uh, 
to this company and they were making under license and they had an American guy there overseeing the plant. Well, in like 3940, when uh, the, the Japs were getting all pissed at us, um, they kicked him out basically and said, you got to go. And they made him until I think 50, seven or eight and when i was in japan uh actually i was on my round the world chopper pan hit i did a round the world trip on the uh, rikuo had actually made a prototype copy of a pan head not under license just bought one and made a copy of it but then they went out of business and it never went into production hey that that so, pan is that an honest to god radius rod front end I can't see. Oh it. yeah, yeah. No shit. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's that's serious and, OG chopper shit right there, buddy. Oh yeah. And uh, man, that thing made it across the Russian roads and did not break. I was so amazed. Right on. So listen, Rob Nussbaum is calling bullshit on you, saying that you're no expert. He said you got the highest scores on the the quiz for the motorcycle chase, so you can't say that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm still not. There's so many experts out there. I like to think that, that I'm I'm fairly well versed in oddball motorcycle trivia, but I do yeah I'm not an expert. I, there's people that I call when I have questions, yeah. I, so I know experts, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Roughly, what is, that, is that a K model? This is a, was that a K model? Uh, no, it's, it is a '57 Sportster. Wow, first year Sportster. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the one next to the Rikuo, the Scrambler, is also a '57. So this one here has a pretty interesting story. It uh, it belonged to this lady in Las Vegas, and this was her riding club and club attire. So it was the uh, the MC the oh, sorry the riding roulette from Las Vegas, and this was her metal flake vest and. Her helmets and right the trophies on. she won with it. <clears throat> yeah, it's another one I need to get on the road, but it just uh, sits here. And this is a, a 1928 Douglas, which is, of course, the coolest name ever for a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> and some, I have a my building faces the the square, so I did the front of it look like an old Indian dealership, and this is just some more. Just, just Duh. some more like once in a lifetime <laughs> motorcycles. Yeah, right. I, I got you. <laughs> yeah, right. Roughly, how big is your like? How big is your collection? How many complete motorcycles do you have right now? Roughly. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> I, I... Is that an I don't know? Uh huh. Or I can't actually uh -huh. admit that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good oh. man. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's. I got a bunch of them. A bunch of them. Yeah, and, and stuff. I like, I like motorcycle stuff. I like signs and oil cans and, you know, Hodaka air cleaners. And stuff. <laughs> right. Stuff. Yeah, I'm just a, a sucker for stuff. Do you have, do you have a favorite? Uh, yes, I do, and unfortunately, it's not here right now because I wore the motor out, and uh, my buddy's rebuilding it for me. Um, just because there's there's so many people out there that are so much better at that than I am. And when it comes to paint work or engine builds, uh, you know, I, I leave it to experts. Um, but it's a 1936 Indian Chief, and I bought it a few years ago. It was in northwest washington state and uh the poor guy that owned it he'd had a stroke like 10 years prior and uh had been sitting in his garage and he decided to sell it and a guy that follows my online blog contacted me and said hey this might be something you'd be interested in i've been wanting an early chief for a while and so I contacted him and i was wanting to buy it some other guys were wanting to buy it and i'm like look i'll you know, he had a few offers. I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll meet their offer. I said, but here's what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to fly up there with a sack full of tools. I'm going to get it running. I'm going to ride it home to Alabama. And he says, well, I want you to buy it then. So 
So that's what I did, and I rode it home to Alabama. And uh, I, I love that bike. It is absolutely my, my favorite motorcycle. Okay, so no bullshit. How how did you get a monk to ride your Indian? Well, he didn't actually ride it. He just <laughs> sat on it. That was uh, that was in Mong at the Russian Mongolian border uh, during the round the world trip, the first round the world trip there. And uh, yeah, there was only a couple of guys that actually sat on the bike without me asking that I didn't get upset, and yeah. he was one of them. I'm just standing outside this Buddhist monastery. And uh, in fact, uh, it's the same monastery where I got my, uh, this shifter knob. It's uh, called an advisor head. It's got different faces. Oh, let me get to it. So wait, wait, let me go back. I'm at the, uh, go back there. Okay. So you, anyhow, the story on the shift knob is it's got four faces on it and you put it in your hands and you turn it as you're saying your prayer. When you stop your prayer, you look at the at the, the face or the and see well whichever face is looking at you tells you the likelihood of your prayer coming true. Oh, right oh. on. So it was like so an early a, it was like an early magic eight ball. Early magic eight ball, yes. Yeah. So, so it's got a smiley face, a frowny face, kind of a straight face. And, you know, few few guys are on here. They're not going to let this rest. Um, where is the Dixie stuff stashed? Chopper, Dave, and Rob, and all these guys. They want to know. They want to know where the Dixie stuff oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> That's in my armory. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, also want to know where the Dixie stuff is. Yes, we have to go to Alabama. Like yeah. I never oh. thought I would say those words, but we have Definitely. to go to Alabama. <laughs> Hey, All now, right. be nice. We got viewers in Alabama. So this <coughs> this is my... Hang on, let me turn the light on in here. It's just very uh, technical. I got to screw the bulb in. There we go. Okay, so this is my armory of uh, NOS World War II Harley parts, and this is a World War II paratrooper bike. It's British. No, so, no. yeah, this is all... The goodies from, well, not all from Dixie, but uh, just every anytime I can find something I for World War II stuff, I grab it and throw it in my closet. <laughs> it looks like you should kind of have a museum. Right. Yeah, it does. Didn't um, didn't uh, Chris Gatto buy a ton of Dixie stuff? He did. He was one. Of, he was one of the guys. A lot of a lot of people got in on that. Yeah, I, uh, I, from what I remember hearing, he bought. A couple trailer loads of Dixie stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I I just went and tried to buy. Um, well, I mean, I bought a bunch of stuff that I resold. Uh, not not antique stuff, but just stuff in general. There's some up there too. Not just Dixie stuff, just old army crates and stuff. But uh, I, I just kind of went and got um old army stuff so i went to the 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 building they had in florida and me and a friend of mine in fact one of the guys went on the uh world war ii trip with me we uh we spent like two or three days at different times up there you know 20 30 foot off the ground and it was you can imagine a metal building in florida in uh, the summertime and being oh, yeah. 30 foot off the ground it was hot yeah. and uh we just kept buying pallets and pallets of stuff and I kept all the stuff I wanted to, and then uh, sold off the you know shovel head point sets and whatever, and paid for all of it. So it was good. Wow, we got to go there. Let's see. Ask Doug about his shovel head. That was the only HD to do the TAT. That's from Joe Sparrow. Uh, oh, it's not a shovel head. It's the Evo. That's back here. That's actually on my list of things to get rejuvenated here soon. So, whoops, I forgot I was doing swap this around, swap it back around. I'm not a very high tech redneck. <laughs> so anyhow, this is what I did the Trans America Trail on, which is uh, 5,000 miles of dirt uh, goes across the country, east to west, ends up in Oregon, and. Uh, you know, I thought, well, it's the Trans America Trail, and I couldn't find where anybody had done it on an American motorcycle. 
Oh, and wow. I'm like, well, what's, what's the worst, worst possible bike I could do? I was like, well, how about an ultra classic <laughs> and with a sidecar and a winch? And uh, so I took off on it, and six weeks later, I made it to Oregon. Wow. Most people do it in three weeks. <laughs> Now, was wow. it six so, yeah, weeks was, uh, because you chose to take your time or because you had problems? You know, the bike, I'm trying to think of anything I might have broke on the bike. I uh, wore out some tires. Um, this fender broke off like 28 different times. And I, <laughs> you know, add more support to it. Um, and I rubbed the hole in my rear brake line. Oh. And I think that was the only problems I had. Of course, I had a, a big battery in the box that powered the winch and I could, it was all wired up to the bike so I could keep it charged. And then I, it, you know, if I was camping or something, I could run anything I wanted off of that battery and not kill the bike battery. Or I could use it to help jumpstart the bike if I, you know, needed to. But the, the whole winch idea, and I made it to where it's got a receiver plug so I could plug it into the back if I had to pull myself backwards. Wow, right and, on. And I, so I actually, and the, the winch was actually a joke to begin with, and I used it probably a dozen times, and it got me out of some really bad, <laughs> bad spots. That's awesome. So, so yeah, it was, uh, that was a great trip. And, and this poor thing's been sitting here since I moved here because I've been, you know, screwing around with everything else. So I need to rebuild that old spit and sputter carb on there, and I think it'll fire right up. What's up? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Well, I I have a question for you, man, because I've I've done a lot of traveling, but nothing like you. And I know that, like Idaho was my my forty ninth ninth state in the United States, and it was always that one that I was just like, I'll get there sometime. I'll get there sometime. And when I finally did ride all over Idaho, blew my mind how cool. It oh, was. I love Idaho. I love Idaho. I do too. Idaho it's and awesome. Montana. If it wasn't for the winters. I, I'd live there, but I, I um, want to know. I, I, I want to know around the world. Like, what was the one place that you got to that you were just like, you know? Because I always underestimated Idaho, and just like you said, it's a, it's it's amazing. What's the one place that you got to that just blew your mind? You couldn't believe it was nothing like you thought. Well, that that would have been, you know, as far as not scenery, but just in general, was Russia. Yeah, you know, I mean, we grew up during the you know duck and cover, and and they're gonna bomb us any second. And, and the funny thing is, talking to Russians, they were told the same thing about us back in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, you know, so they had drills for you know the Americans are bombing, take cover, you know, run under a desk or something. So, but the people there were were really nice and helpful. Um, other places that I expected to be a lot worse than they were um iraq uh, i was really expecting you know it was, i kind of went as just a, a joke slash challenge just to see if i could get in and uh and they let me in and uh and the people there were so nice it was amazing you know i'm, I'm running an alabama license plate it's not like i'm you know lying and saying i'm you know a canadian or something fucked up like that and, uh, you know, the people were just really nice and helpful. And, and unfortunately, I went there during the month of Ramadan when their uh, wow. religion doesn't allow them to uh, eat or drink or anything during the day. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't up on Muslim cultures when I went. So I get there and find this out. But because I was a foreigner, it didn't matter to them. I mean, I'd be, you know, stopped at a gas station filling up the gas tank and somebody would bring me out a cup of water or of ice cream or whatever. Well, they figured you and, were going uh, to hell either way. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, <'cause>, yeah. <laughs> didn't ma- didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, this guy's fucked. So <laughs> he we might as well help him, you know, help him on his way. Yeah. It'll, it'll give you a good, good sign on the way through. Wow. Right on. Well, what's, uh, what, what's next? What do you do from here? I mean, how do you, how do you talk? Well, this? nothing right now. I, I yeah. had a, a bike lined up in England. I was flying over there in April. Uh, I was going to spend a month touring Scotland just because I hadn't toured Scotland 
And uh, then I was going to the Isle of Man for the TP race. Yeah. And then I was going to India to do a couple of trips with uh, Motorcycle Sherpa. And uh, that's who I do the, the Nepal trip with. And uh, yeah, so all that's just gone to shit. I so think you I should do I'm that, gonna... Chris. Yeah. You, I really do. I think you need to do that trip. The Motorcycle oh, Sherpa, the it, Nepal. It, it's, it's amazing. It is so much fun. It have, really is. I mean, it's, have it's, I mentioned how much I love my wife? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that could be your birthday present this year. Yeah, I'll tell you what I well, take. I would take you know, for my birthday my... right now is just getting the hell out of this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are y'all guys on lockdown up there? Because up here, down here, we're not. So, I mean, I'm still able to go out, ride around. I mean, I don't go. Not that I'm much for socializing locally, anyhow. I mean, I have a few friends that live around here that I. The grocery stores are closed. Haven't. I mean, are open, but we're not supposed to be out and about. Unless it's something important, or unless, like Mark, you're essential. <laughs> we are non-essential. <laughs> yeah, what that means is they don't care if you get the coronavirus and die. Yeah, you you got to go to work. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I still have to go to work every day. Um, you know, I hope it all blows over soon. And if I can't go overseas then I'll, you know, you were talking about Idaho. I usually go out there every year and, uh, Idaho, Montana or somewhere and I'll, uh, take a bike and some camping gear and a fishing pole and hit the mountains Amen. for so, two, three, four weeks or however long I can go. Now you do the motorcycle Sherpa in Nepal. Would you ever consider doing something like that here in the United States? with people because i mean you've been everywhere and so a lot of people are too afraid to venture out on their own and take that adventure by themselves but if they have somebody that's kind of been there done that a little bit before would you would you ever do that here in the u.s yeah never really thought about it i mean it's, it's the u.s <laughs> but she means she means to be a guide for other people coming into the country because it's well, it's even, true like you right. It, yeah, not and, and I, I get that. A lot of people, you know, are uncomfortable. I'm I'm doing a trip next year to the uh, to the Isle of Man, and uh, taking a, a group of guys over with their bikes and all that stuff. It's just something I just kind of organized on my own to do a container full of bikes over there and back, uh, because so many of my friends that want to go to the Isle of Man talk about going to the Isle of Man, never go to the Isle of Man. Yeah. And even if you're not in the motorcycle racing, uh, just to go there, if you're in the motorcycles, you need to go to the Isle of Man. Just to the whole spectacle, the whole island is just amazing. And when you're sitting there, you know, n behind a, a two foot tall brick wall and, a, and three sport bikes go by doing 190, 200 miles an hour, even if you're not in the sport bike, yeah. it's friggin' impressive. I agree. <laughs> so, you know. Dude, Chopper. And I, I want people to, you know, go do stuff. Chopper Dave just, just commented, let's do Volcanoes of the Northwest. That would be sick. I would do that. I'd do oh, that yeah. in a minute. Even if you did, like, Chris and I have talked for a few years about doing the Mississippi River Road yeah. from north to south. I've done but it like, with Milwaukee Mike. It's That's but, a cool trip. And I'm just talking, even for people that are from the United States, some people just, they need that little bit of of guidance to get them out of their comfort zone. Like when we did our honeymoon trip, we just kind of said, we're going this way and just went that way. And afterwards people were like, oh my God, that was the trip of a lifetime. I'd never be able to do that. And that's yeah, why I said, yes, you know, you you'd be a great, you'd be a great source for that. Just to get people <laughs> to places that they would never think of going, but appreciate so much. I'd sign, Chris and I would be like, yep, we're in. Yeah, I'd ride with Doug. Oh, in a heartbeat. <laughs> New business yeah, venture, you, just you saying. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Doug's like, listen, you're, you're going to screw up my trip here. Like, well, no, if I mean, I, he if could I limit got, it. But no, like to two people. Right yeah. now. He does, it, it, I, Doug doesn't hit me to the, the, like the group kind of, no, you know, I don't he's doing his group. own thing. I don't mean Group. Well, I mean, you like, know, one I, cool and I'm, people that... I'm not. But when it came to the Nepal thing, I went on a trip uh, with those guys 
a year ago, November, and I really liked it. And uh, Bear, the uh, one of the owners of the company, is like, well, you know, let's organize a trip for you to lead. I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, so I went this last November. I went on two back to back. So I went on one to refresh the the route, and then the second one to kind of go along as guide or you know whatever they called it a signature trip but you know and and it was fun and i'm i'm not a real big organized trip kind of guy as far as going on them but i was really looking forward to doing the one in india this year we're doing the same thing i was doing two of them back to back and it was four of the highest mountain passes in the world in, in the himalayas and the the highest i've been so far my uh my sportster uh, was like fifteen thousand five hundred, and we'd be going up to some that were like eighteen four. Mm. So I was I was really looking forward to that, but you know I guess well you'll have to wait till next year now. <laughs> but yeah. I'll probably do a couple more Nepal trips in uh, in November. So yeah, if you, I'll uh, I'll pencil you in, and, and when we get closer to knowing about yeah. it, I'll I'll keep you in the loop if you want to. Absolutely. You wanna go. Hey, I'm surprised to hear you say that the highest you ever been is 14 or 15. You, you never did the top of Pikes Peak. That's like 12 something, isn't it? I thought it was. I thought it was 16. I didn't think there was anything here that tall. I'll have to look it up. 14,115. Uh, What's that? 14,115. Well, there you go. Oh, there you go. Heather I, I, just knows everything. Well, she, I, sh- I should know better than to challenge my wife about being right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Right on, The computer man. doesn't lie. Right? Google. So what's the oldest bike you have and the newest bike you have? Uh, the oldest bike I have um, is out at my buddies in Colorado, Cole who may be listening if he is, hey, finish my bike. <laughs> but <it's> a, uh, <laughs> no, no he's, he's gotten a lot farther on than I have. It's, uh, it's a 1912 Harley. And uh, I found it when I was on my way home on the 36th Chief. Uh, a friend of mine in Nebraska had it. And I didn't know he had it or didn't know it was for sale and stopped by to see him. And he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to sell this. And I, I thought about it for like a day and I called him up and like, I think I want to buy that because <laughs> I didn't have anything that old. Um, I've got a few other bikes from the team and uh, the newest bike I have is yeah, this one. This started off life as a 2007 Triumph Bonneville. And then I put high pipes and mud tires on it. Cause you know, that's what we do in Alabama. And uh, that's, that's my newest one. Dude. I love those new Bonnevilles. All right. I bought this thing because it was cheap. And then I put the high pipes and knobby tires and re geared it and some other stuff. And dollar for dollar, it is the most fun motorcycle I have. I mean, I can just hit the trails with it. In fact, when I go out west this year, it's, it's going to be a toss up whether I take this from my. Uh, I've got a. I built a Sportster Enduro that I keep in Europe, and I've got one here as well, a Evo Sportster. Yeah. And uh, in fact, it's. There it is. So I don't know which one I'll take out west, but one of the two. Right on, man. Cold Eister did did tune in. He's like, I heard you. (laughs) What's that? Cole heard you. Oh, well, good. So hurry up. (laughs) (laughs) Jason said, Jason said, Point well taken. I, 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 I had that thing sitting in boxes for because it, it was a project. It was a good project, really nice part. And it was sitting in boxes for three years. And uh, finally, I was talking with Cole, and, and he's like, well, I'll put it together for you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I, I had to go out to uh, Kansas to pick up a pile of old parts and uh, took it with me. And he was in Colorado, so we just met my friends in Kansas. And, and he had it like semi mocked up like later that week so yeah it's, it's coming along hopefully i'll be riding it soon right on i don't think i'll cannonball it but it, cause I, I i look at the cannonball more of a fun ride not not an 
ordeal. <laughs> and riding the 1912 Harley single that far to me would be an ordeal. There's other people doing it on those and more power to them, but I don't think I really want right. to try that. I just want to ride along on my modern 1921 twin and, and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> modern Dude, I want, I want to do the cannonball so bad someday. I really, really do. It's just right now I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in, in chopper jail and that's all right. I'm good with chopper jail. But listen, man, thank you. There's been choppers on, on the cannonball before, so you wouldn't be the first. L we keep trying to talk Jason yes. into doing a thing called um, bell, bell Bottoms, bottoms and, and Bed, bed rolls. rolls. Yeah. And do a whole cannonball, like just Long 70s chopper, choppers and tents. Tent camping. Like, of course, there's there's no real attraction to it because party. everyone that has Bell Bottoms and Bed Rolls also broke as a joke. And the entrance fee would have to be like 20 bucks and a bag of weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, but it'd be a good time. Oh, I think it, like just field parties and yeah, it would be fun. It would be a blast. All right. Well, listen, we should cut you loose, man. We had you on here for a good long time and I super, super appreciate you letting us come into your place. I really do. Oh, no problem. Y'all welcome to come down and visit whenever you want. Oh, we're love gonna to. take you up on that. We're yeah, that would be awesome. Year. Hands down. Absolutely. Tell everybody where they can follow you. Um uh well I'm on Facebook, of course, like everybody. Uh and on Instagram it's RTW Doug. Um I don't post a whole lot of stuff on there, but you know, I post pictures now and then and that just depends. When I'm doing the cannibal or something, I try to post more stuff or if i'm on a trip but when i'm just sticking around in the garage it's uh you know, i post a few pictures here and there usually when i do something stupid and break stuff <laughs> i do it i do it so often and i call it an idiot tax when i do something stupid it costs me money it's an idiot tax right it, when you do it so often you have to have a name for it it's pretty bad <laughs> yeah Oh, I didn't know that was left hand thread. Huh. Right? Yeah. We we call that Monday. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Jason's in if we call it belly shirts and bed rolls. Man, I am just not able to pull off the belly shirt anymore. Mm -mm, not going to happen. Oh. Uh, That's a whole lot of bad. Uh, oh, we've got people in for the uh, chopper don't, ride. Don't sell yourself short, Chris. You'd be fine. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, thanks. You, you could do it. We could call it half shirt and belly roll. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The belly roll. That could be a whole new dance. Yeah. The belly yeah, roll. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, again, thanks for coming on, dude. I appreciate it. Hey, and, uh, well, thanks thanks for having me. And I'll uh, write your article. Write for the next magazine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not actually sure about that no, now that you it mentioned is. it. I, uh, no, it is. <laughs> one week from today for the next issue uh, okay nope. <laughs> that's what i told heather i'm like that's what i had to do with the uh the other magazine when i used to write for them that i don't think they're around anymore but uh you know when i did my chopper trip and uh the shovelhead trip and all that um, and uh i was like you gotta give me a deadline and make it a couple days before the actual deadline but don't tell me it's a couple days before no, the actual i'm just gonna deadline. lie to him all the time I have permission yeah, exactly. to lie. That, he told that's what me. you got to do. You got to me. call me up and say, "Hey, look, we need that tomorrow." Yep. And so one week hey, from today. Wait a minute. Be... Look, I got, I got to straighten something out real quick because Rich Forsyth comes on and says, "Broke as a joke?" Question mark. Like I was dogging on chopper guys. I am a chopper guy. I am broke as a joke because all my money goes into choppers, and the name of the company that me and Mark have is Flat Broke. Chops and yeah. rods, because we if we can. have an extra dollar, that shit goes into a hot rod or a chopper That's real right. quick. I can personally attest to that. <laughs> right on. All right, man. Uh, one more time, I want to thank you for coming on, and hopefully, we see you on the other side of this when we're all in a better headspace and and can uh, do some riding some damn where. Yeah, Doug, yeah, always a pleasure. Maybe they'll. Uh... Well, the, the good thing is you don't have to cancel the BMR this year. <laughs> Not my <laughs> fault this year. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. But we were going to have it. This, this was the year. It was all set up. This yep. was the year. 
this was going to be the best one ever. We had dancing girls, free food, free booze, everything. And now look at it. It's on the ship. Son of a bitch. Damn it. <laughs> All right, man. We'll catch up with you again soon. Right. Y'all have a good one. Take care, Doug. Okay, have a good one. Ladies and Bye. gentlemen. He's awesome. I love Doug. Doug Wolfke. You can't not like Doug. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I know. He's always got a smile on his face. Even when he's pissed, he smiles. I know. He was, I feel so bad. I let Doug down this Daytona. He kept coming by looking for Nugget and Smalls. Oh. And we kept leaving Nugget and Smalls at the house. Yeah, we gave them days off we for this Daytona. We gave them days off. Yep. And he was so sad. <laughs> Next time, Doug. All right. Well, so, do we still have more news? Are we done? We do or have do a couple of pieces of news. We're gonna um, we're gonna take two seconds for station identification or some shit that they call it on professional shows, and uh, we'll be back with you. The last couple pieces of news, and we're gonna wrap this show up. So stick around for just a minute. We'll be back with more shop talk. last video in from our uh network partners over at chopper town if you guys are not hip to this we told you we're trying to mention everybody that has an outreach program going on chopper town is actually running a free movie once a day they started doing this uh, a little a little while ago and um once a day you can get on their network and watch movies from their library so go check them out over at chopper town um we sure do appreciate them and and all of their viewers tuning in to shop talk every week so thank you for that um, last couple pieces of news, and this is hard for me to believe, but I'm going to report it anyway. Swiss rider on Harley Davidson Livewire sets electric motorcycle distance record, 1,070 miles and four countries in 24 hours. Now, uh, Harley Davidson electric Livewire offers about a hundred miles of riding range. So it's not as, as well suited to long road trips as it's gasoline powered siblings. That doesn't mean it can't go the distance. Swiss rider Michael Von Tell proved that by setting a new 24-hour distance record. And listen, I got to tell you this. Like, that's impressive because he obviously had to charge that in between time. And doing a 1,000 in one to begin with is a is a hell of a day of riding. And having to charge that motorcycle, you know, ev what is it with the every 100 miles? That's, that's 10 times you're charging a bike in that 24-hour period. That's pretty badass. That's almost as much charging as it is riding. Right? Yeah. 
So I think that's actually that's all of our news for tonight. We got Ooh. off that pretty easy. Wow. That was cool. Um again, thank you guys all for sharing the program, for sharing our our uh upcoming guest roles that we put out and you know, everybody from from uh from Shop Talk appreciates what you guys are doing to help us keep this program going. And here's a little challenge that we're putting out. We're looking for guys to have yeah, swap batteries. Maybe he did that. I'm not sure. Do you know if those were a lot of battery swapping, wouldn't it? Were those charging or swap? And I think the like the entire engine is the battery. That might not yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. So Chopper Dave, we're gonna get in touch with you about coming on. We want to have a uh, what's in your shop show with you. Yeah. But um, we want some other guys. We want some people coming on for what's in your shop. So Anthony if, Robinson, I'm gonna call him yeah. out. If he you does guys, some cool stuff. And, and this is open to anybody. Get a hold of us. Send us an email. You know the email, cyclesourcemain at comcast.net. <laughs> yeah, don't email him. He won't answer it. Go ahead and email me, or you can send me a message on Facebook. Right. Prefer the email. I'm not good about Facebook Messenger at all. But, um, yeah, we want to have you guys on. We want to we want to band together and, um, and, you know, stay in the garage, stay safe. You know, kind of do what we're told right now and until we can get through this thing. Or do like Mark. Get out there and get it done. Ride motorcycles. <laughs> do motorcycle stuff. You know, because on the other side of this, we're all still going to, well, hopefully we're all still going to be out here. We're yeah. all still going to love motorcycles. God will. So uh, do what you can to keep it rolling. Yeah, and please be safe no matter what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's one of the biggest things. You know, we keep we keep horsing around about all this stuff but consider the fact that the the things are being put in place right now are to keep people safe i mean mark mark has his his father that's living in the house with him and you know it's a it's it's a an entirely different proposition when you think about what you could be bringing home to somebody that's you know an elderly person or somebody that has some some health concerns to begin with so just consider that do what you have to right now until they get this thing under control and for God's sake, stay the hell off the 24-hour news cycle because they're batshit crazy over there. Got any last-minute words of advice, Mark? Now, again, stay safe. Uh, go do some cool shit. Do that coloring thing. Pitch in. Send some pictures in. Let us see what you're building. We want to see what you're building. That'd be pretty cool. Like uh, like to see what comes, something good come out of this corona deal. That's and if right. somebody built something cool in the shop, it'd be really nice to see what you're doing. Yeah, and you see, you see some of these initiatives going on. Go and support them. Get involved. You know, get, whatever you can do right now, whatever time that we have. If it if it's the next two weeks that we're all pent up here, if that was the last two weeks that you were going to be on this planet, how would you spend it? You know, right now is Riding the time motorcycles. to right now is the time to live your life. You know, those things that you've been putting off you, until you had time, you have the time to do them now. So get get busy with that. Well, hurry up and finish your, finish your painting so we can go ride a motorcycle, damn it. Jeez. All right, with that, man, I'm going to remind you guys that Shop Talk is coming to you live from the uh, Cycle Source Magazine studio through the Cycle Source and Chopper Town Network this Sunday and every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with 90 to 120 minutes of all the bullshit we can fit. And uh, for this week, we're going to pull this one into the station. Until next week, same <laughs> Chopper Time. Same chopper channel. Be safe. See ya.